Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you are going to be listening to, it comes from a message that I received. If you have any confession or any life experience that you want to share with us, please feel free to um, write to me on my WhatsApp and um, I will share your story here on our um, channel. So the following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear brothers. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world. The message is like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story? Always listening to your channel here and other channels as well. I was born and raised in Osogbo, a town in Osun state known for its deep spiritual roots. Growing up, I saw both poverty and wealth, and I longed for the riches that I saw others enjoy. But by the time I turned 35, I was still struggling. I had a family to provide for, but my ambitions, they were greater than my own circumstances. I wanted more, much more. I craved the respect and status that only money could buy, and I was willing to do whatever it took to get it. When I first heard about a powerful man who could assist me, I had to go there to Ibadan. It was through someone who had told me that this man, he was very powerful. They said that he could grant anyone anything, love, success, most importantly, in my case, all that I wanted was wealth, great wealth. I was driven by desperation. I made the three-hour drive there. My heart was pounding with anticipation. Kept on asking myself, what exactly was he going to help me with? When I arrived at the shrine, the shrine was hidden in a very dense forest in the outskirts of the city, and I could feel the weight of the spirits as if they were asking me tormenting me asking me why i had came there instead of looking for help somewhere else as i approached i noticed that the heart was very small with walls covered in strange symbols and i saw that the man he was busy burning some incense and they had a powerful smell i felt a shiver as i entered but i pushed it aside i had to be brave I was supposed to be brave so that I can enjoy life, I told myself, for I was there. I was there for a reason. I explained my desire for wealth, and the man then looked at me, and he finally spoke. And when he spoke, it felt as if the whole place was vibrating. His voice was low and commanding. He then said, the price for what you seek is I. Are you ready to give up what is most dear to you? Without hesitation, I nodded. I was blind to the consequences. He gave me a small beaded talisman and instructed me to return it in two days, bringing my most cherished possession. Those two days were truly agonizing. I knew deep down what was required of me, for he said that this talisman is going to make you have a vision, and in that vision, my gods and my ancestors, they are going to reveal to you what exactly is your cherished possession that you are supposed to bring back to my sh to my shrine so they had revealed to me what they wanted they wanted my son my son who was only five yet he meant everything to me i thought that he was the one who was going to inherit everything but when i said he is the one who is going to inherit everything i laughed at myself and i said the only thing that he can inherit from me it is the spirit of poverty I found myself considering the unthinkable. My desire for wealth was way overpowering, and in my mind, I convinced myself that it was for our family. At least he had to die so that others that will come after him, they can have a better future. I told myself that he was too young to understand that the sacrifice he was making, it was for us all and that I was the one who had to make the hard choices. As for him, he had no choice at all. I returned back to that shrine with Toby, not his real name, trying to keep my emotions in check. I told my son that we were going on a little adventure. He held my hand tightly as we walked towards the place where I was going to sacrifice him. I looked at him, and he was looking around, a little bit nervous. 
when we arrived there, everything was already planned. The candles were there around a small altar. He took my son from me and my heart pounded against my chest as I watched the ritual as it began. I looked at my innocent son and he looked at me for a brief moment. I wanted to cry, but I had been told that the moment that I was going to cry, it meant that this sacrifice was not going to be accepted by the gods. Then I had to do it all over again. And at the same time, my son would have been killed by the gods and they would have drank his blood. So I forced myself to remain silent. As the ritual concluded, I really felt bad about what I had done. I kept on looking at myself and I kept on looking at my, at my son, even though he was still alive, but I had seen the healer as he had stolen his spirit from my son. And then that was when I was given some herbs that I was supposed to force him to drink that the moment that we would have arrived back home. And I had been given another pouch that had some charms that I had to bury outside of my home. This I had to do in the middle of the night while Lista was naked. In the weeks that followed, my fortunes, they totally changed. I got contracts. Contracts came my way and with the contracts came the money. And I quickly rose to a status that I had only dreamt of. I bought a mansion and I filled my garage with luxury cars, always throwing lavish parties to celebrate my success. I thought that I had everything, even though my son had died, but still I was living my life. But then strange things began to happen. There was this other night when I was returning back from the club. That was when I started to hear my son talking to me. This was the moment when I had been separated from my wife. She said that the way that I was going around enjoying, yet... I did not even give her the opportunity to mourn for our son, so she had returned back to her mother's house in the village. I was all alone in my big mansion. When I stepped inside, that was when I heard my son laughing at me. At first I thought that since I was high and drunk, it was just my imagination, but it grew louder by the day, more persistent. I started seeing his face in mirrors in windows. The ghost of my son kept on haunting me until the day that I saw his ghost and he beat me up. And then that was when I decided to seek help. I sought help visiting other spiritualists, but none could offer me relief. I returned back to that wood priest. Unfortunately, the man passed away. I pleaded with the relatives. I pleaded with them so that they can take the talisman that this would priest had given to me, but they could not accept it. So here I am. I am someone who is haunted by the ghost of my own son, whom I killed in a money-making ritual. There are nights when I wake up and I can see my son. He'll be sitting in my bedroom and he will be like, why did you leave me, Papa? And then he just vanishes. I am living in constant fear, always surrounded by women. I would rather choose to go to bed with three or four women. Even if we do not do anything, at least they keep me company. I know that I have another human being with me in my mansion. These money-making rituals, they do not bring anything good. All that they do is that they bring curses into your life. I feel like my house is a prison right now. This is my own story of how I traded my son's life for money. Dear listeners, Ray, there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear brother. If you have any confession uh, that you want to share with us, please you can send your confession to our WhatsApp number.